In our last session, we talked about the internal control framework, which is the COSO model. We talked about five specific areas related to internal controls. Now what we're going to talk about is the audit of the internal controls over financial reporting. Now keep in mind that the audit of internal controls of financial reporting is mandated by Sarbanes-Oxley for publicly traded companies. So the key word is that we are looking at the internal controls over financial reporting. Now the mandate related to this audit is in section 404 of Sarbanes-Oxley. There are two components of this. One is the management responsibility. The other piece of this is the auditor's responsibility. Section 404 of Sarbanes-Oxley requires that management of publicly traded companies to issue a report that accepts responsibility for establishing and maintaining adequate internal controls over financial reporting and assert whether these internal controls are effective as of the end of the fiscal year. So there's two things that we need to understand here, one of which is management, number one, accepts responsibility, and number two, that these internal controls are effective, and you notice we're not saying they're effective throughout the year, but they're effective at a specific date, which is at the end of the fiscal year. Management responsibility, again, restating is we accept responsibility, Management is required to evaluate the effectiveness of the entity's internal controls using, using a suitable control criteria. Now, the suitable control criteria has been established as the COSO framework, which is why we talked about the COSO framework before we began this discussion. The next piece is that management supports the evaluation with sufficient evidence, including documentation, what this means is that management is responsible to establish a system of testing these internal controls. At the end of the year, management presents a written assessment regarding the effectiveness of the entity's internal controls as of the end of the entity's most recent fiscal year. The auditor's responsibility related to the internal control uh, from Section 404 and AS5 is that the auditor must audit and report on the effectiveness of the internal controls over financial reporting. The auditor is required to conduct an integrated audit. So we use this term integrated audit of the entity's internal controls and the financial statements. Let's talk about why we are using the word integrated. Well, as we have discussed, and we'll discuss this even further, is within the financial statement audit, we conduct a, an assessment of the internal controls. This assessment of the internal controls is done so that we can identify the risk of material misstatement. So as we talk about this integrated audit in response to Sarbanes-Oxley, what we're going to find out is this is not necessarily different as compared to our assessment of internal controls for financial statements, but it is expanded. So from the auditor's perspective, he or she is auditing the internal controls over financial reporting as part of its financial statement audit. The internal controls of, over financial reporting, the official definition is you notice that it pertains to the maintenance of records that are accurate and fairly reflective. The next point is that it provides reasonable assurance that transactions are properly authorized and recorded in accordance with GAAP. So you notice in point two, two separate points, authorization and compliance with GAAP. Finally, the third point is we have reasonable assurance regarding the prevention or timely detection of unauthorized acquisition, use, or disposition of the company's assets. So again, management must design the system of internal controls, and there's no question that management is responsible for this internal control framework. Within the COSO model, we've talked about internal controls being a top-down approach. This is what we're talking about. Management, from the highest levels, must maintain an ethical environment and must conduct the risk assessment, establish the control environment, 
and have this from a top-down approach. From the financial statement perspective, these controls need to be there to mitigate the risk of material misstatements in the financial statements. Management must document this. They must test the effectiveness of the internal controls and annually report. So the two points there, documentation and testing, implies that management needs to have a testing component in regards to these internal controls. Generally speaking, there may be a uh, control group that reports directly to finance in terms of doing this control testing. In many cases, this control group is a part of internal audit. doesn't specify, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to do it, but at the end of the day, management needs to have these things in place. Let's look at the steps of management's evaluation of internal controls. The first point is we need to identify reporting risks and controls to mitigate these risks. So one of the most difficult pieces related to this is identifying what these key risks are and what are the key controls. Now, as we go through this, I think it became very obvious that these control areas are going to be in transactions, sales transactions, in the purchasing transaction, in the controls related to human resource and payroll. Uh, all of these things need to be considered as we're looking at risks and also as we are looking at internal controls. Now, keep in mind that what we're specifically talking about here are internal controls over financial reporting. When the organization does its risk assessment, as we talked about in our first lecture, the risks to the organization go beyond simply the internal controls over financial reporting. So we need to understand that management from a risk perspective is concerned with things beyond the uh, fair presentation of the financial statements. Okay, so once we've identified the risks and we've identified the controls that we need to test, is we then need to evaluate the operating effectiveness of these internal controls over financial reporting. Finally, we need to provide a report on the effectiveness over, uh, of internal controls over financial reporting. So the point is here is that this internal control group is very much involved in the evaluation process. The internal control group is reporting this to management, the senior management in terms of uh, the finance department, as well as higher within the organization. And this information regarding the control testing that the control group is doing becomes a part of the, effect of the effectiveness report. And in fact, this report then, then needs to be integrated in the financial statements, as well as the auditor's report, not only of the audit of the financial statements, but the auditor also includes a, an opinion regarding the, the internal controls. So let's talk about the concept related to internal control deficiency. Now you notice that there's going to be several categories, so let's talk about these. The first two includes control deficiency. The control deficiency is shortcomings in internal controls such that the objective of reliable financial reporting may not be achieved. It could be in the design of the control or the operation. So when we think about design and operation, kind of think about it this way, is the design is, are we doing the right thing? Are we establishing a, a control for a specific risk? And then in the operation is, are we actually following this control? Uh, many times, talk to people that are actually doing the job of the day-to-day -day operation, and I ask them related to a specific control, and they'll say, oh, if I had to do this, I'd never get anything done. Well, in that case, maybe the design is good, maybe it's not good because people are circumventing it, but the real issue is the operation is people are basically ignoring the control. But again, we're looking at control deficiency. So this is the lowest level of a deficiency in terms of the categorization. Significant deficiency, what we see here is a deficiency or a combination of deficiencies over the financial reporting that is less severe 
than a material weakness. Yet the importance is enough to merit attention by those responsible for the oversight. Okay, so again, control deficiency least, the significant deficiency moderate, and then the most severe is material weaknesses. So material weaknesses is a deficiency or combination of deficiencies that makes it reasonably possible that a material misstatement that that a material misstatement of the financial or the company's annual or interim financial statements will not be prevented or detected on a timely basis. So keep in mind, and this becomes very interesting, is we are talking about the risk of a material misstatement. So it doesn't necessarily mean that a material misstatement happened. So in fact, an auditor may be reporting that the financial statements are free of material misstatement, but at the same time report that there is a deficiency that is at the level of a material weakness. Looking at this, and this becomes very important as we're looking at internal control deficiencies, you may see similar uh, tables uh, reporting control weaknesses within the organization. You notice the x-axis is likelihood. The y-axis is magnitude. So from a control perspective, we're looking at the upper quadrant Magnitude being the impact it will have to the organization. Likelihood being the likelihood that this uh, error or deficiency will in fact uh, become a problem. We categorize this in terms of control deficiencies, significant deficiencies, and material weaknesses. So there's no question, but we are not looking at remote. We are looking at reasonably possible or probable. From a reporting perspective, if we identify control deficiencies, we're going to report this to management. If we identify a significant deficiency, we're going to report this to the audit committee and to management. And then finally, if in fact there is a material weakness, this is when we are going to report this to external users. So it's only material weaknesses where we are identifying these in the audit of internal controls over financial reporting that then would become a part of the opinion letter. Indicators of material weaknesses, the identification of fraud, whether or not material, on the part of senior management. Well, you notice we're talking about maybe immaterial fraud. Well, why is it important that we're focusing on senior management. Well, we've talked about the fact that the internal control structure is a top-down process. Senior management at the executive, executive level are responsible for establishing this tone, or this tone at the top. So if we were to identify fraud, even if it's not material to the financial statements, this would bring into question an ethical environment or a tone at the top, which is why we as auditors always will be reviewing the expense reports related to senior management. And why are we doing this? Well, this is one of the easiest ways that senior management can create a fraud uh, upon the organization. So we always want to look at the expense reports, and this is an indication possibly of fraud. I'm not saying that they're, that they're committing fraud, but if they wanted to, using the expense reports and travel allowances and so forth is an easy opportunity to do this. Multiple control deficiencies affecting the same financial statement account. So again, if we're looking at a process, the sales process, uh, the purchasing process, if we see multi multiple deficiencies within the process or within the process affecting the financial statement account, this may be a problem. Significant deficiencies from previous management reports. So we always look at the prior management reports and our prior activity related to the audit to determine if in fact these things have actually been changed or corrected. And then finally, anytime there is a restatement of a previously issued financial statement that reflects the correction of a material misstatement, this will in fact be a uh, definite indicator of a material misstatement. Auditors are required to identify and assess the risk of material misstatement due to fraud or error. 
The auditor needs to understand the company's internal controls to determine appropriate audit procedures. We use the term integrated audit that I introduced a few slides ago. This occurs when the auditor provides an opinion on the effectiveness of the client's internal controls over financial reporting and the financial statements. So it's an integrated not only in the reporting process, but it's integrated also in the process of actually conducting the testing. Okay, so I thank you very much for the, your time. Uh, this provides a good introduction to this whole concept related to the integrated audit. It pro provides a good background in terms of understanding the application specifically related to the uh, COSO framework of internal controls. Thank you very much for your time, and we're looking forward to talking to you shortly. <laughs>